Hello and welcome to this tactical analysis of the Germany versus France semi-final of the Women's Euro 2022. So the two tactics that we're going to look at are Germany building up in a back three with either Oberdorf or Magul dropping to become a third centre-back, as well as also France's combination play in the wide spaces, but Germany's doubling up to prevent that. Starting off with Germany in a 2-3-5 in midfield, either Oberdorf or Magul could drop to become a third centre-back. Oberdorf had more license to drop become a central center back right center back whereas Magul tended to towards that right center back position with one of those two taking up a center back role the Germany fullbacks Gwyn or Rausch could take up wide midfield positions or just generally get high and wide up against France's 4-4-2 shape that forced France to drop a lot deeper because they didn't want those balls between the lines whether it was to pop centrally or either of those wide midfielders who sometimes took wider positions or more central positions typically Brand is taking more of a central position with Gwyn overlapping because Brand wants to take the ball in a central space and then drive towards the space between Wendy Renard and Karchui and look to combine with Pop in that central space. Whereas on the far side with Hoot, she could take either an inside or outside position and then she will be supported by Rausch. But Hoot's aim is to try and go on the outside and then cross, which poses a different threat from Brand's leggy dribbling in central areas. Regardless of which avenue Germany look to attack down, Magul is a constant. She's always looking to provide an extra option, looking to overload in those wide spaces, but then also try and get in the box and provide an aerial threat too. Okay, so let's have a look at France's switches and combination play versus Germany's defensive shape. Typically, we have Germany kind of set up in this 2-4 midfield shape with France facing the Germany's 4-2-3-1. The centre-backs for France were happy to ping balls out wide, especially Wendy Renard, looking to try and just avoid that central space and get the ball into France's danger players, obviously Cascarino and Diani. France also looked to play balls through the lines, whether that was towards Gioro, Toiletti, Mallard when she dropped off. In those wide spaces, on the left-hand side, yes, you'd have Gioro come across, but Kachawi is looking to make those underlapping or overlapping runs to support Gascarino and help them get into a crossing position or allow Gascarino to be able to cut in from that left-hand side and get into an inverted position and take a strike at goal. And then from the right-hand side, during midfield build-up, Gioro or Diani could drop to provide those balls, as I said, through the lines. But Diani on that right hand side isn't relying on her fullback to overlap. This is France and with their pace they're looking to try and take advantage of transitional play but against Oberdorf whose positioning and aggression in transition just meant that a lot of France's attempts at counterattacks could break down and the game at time became very back and forth. Germany just made play in those wide areas very difficult by doubling up against those wide midfielders so you would often get Brand or Hoot dropping all the way back and this facilitates France being able to then switch the ball to the other side when they play the ball back and with that let's move on to some examples okay so let's have a look at two examples of germany with this kind of back three shape and this was up against france's 4-4-2 so we've got the four midfielders here and the two center fours in this defensive shape here you have magul dropping into a right back position and the rest of germany's defense kind of splitting to try and get players as high as possible in those wide spaces only shortly after this we see oberdorf instead drop into a central center back position and now we see those wide players the full backs and wide midfielder get as high as they can oh, no also pop you dropped from a center forward position and the issue that the france midfield will have where they want to try and be able to put pressure out here towards whether it's the full back or the one midfielder that's holding the whip but they can't the wide midfielder for france so diani or cascarino they can't because if they do there'll be an easy pass through the lines and this is by far the more dangerous position to prevent Germany gaining possession in. And so we see Hoot cycled from the outside and she came in. This draws Diani in and also her being in this position rather than right on the shoulder 
of the defender prevents Perisay from being able to go and pick her up. Instead, Perisay has to stay deep and this allows Huth to influence the position of Diani and keep her from being able to go out towards Rausch. Rausch ends up circulating the ball back to Oberdorf who kind of started this move. But the key thing is, look how much ground that Germany has gained. They've got the ball all the way back from where Magul had it and now they've forced France 10, 15 yards into their own half. And from Oberdorf, we get a switch of play towards its right-hand side and we've got Gwyn, the right back also in a very high and wide position here on the right hand side and you've got Brand coming inside now to take the attention of Karchawi giving more space and time for Gwyn and now we have Brand and Gwyn looking to combine in this wide space with the Brits also coming across to provide another option, hopefully overload this space. But with these switches, we see just how just stretched the France defence ends up becoming with your nearest uh, centre midfielder here being Bebel. Unfortunately for Germany, they lose possession and France run it back. But I've got to point out, this is Germany, they immediately counter press. Okay, so we've got another scenario in the 66th minute. We have France in there, 4-4-2. And we've got Malard putting pressure on the German defender. It's a 2-1 or a back three here with Andrich making a run from this right hand side again the important thing here being Gvin your fullback is really high up on that right hand side and with the positioning of Magul and Brand Cascarino really doesn't want to go out too early because that'll create a really great position for Magul and Brand in this space which is the more dangerous space so Germany look to try and combine in this space and we see a number of runs here looking to try and exploit the space between Karchawi and Renard so we have Brand making a run from in to out, drawing Karchawi away from Renard and allowing Magul to be able to take advantage if all goes well. And potentially one could even argue that with Gvin making this run here from out to in, it also make a run into this more central space, potentially either for a cutback or maybe even to contest uh, a cross as well. Unfortunately for Germany and Magul, lose the ball during this build-up and France get rid of it, despite the counter pressure by Germany. Lastly, I I just wanted to have a look at France and their combination play versus Germany's doubling up. So initially we start off with a Magul free kick. I personally think that Germany were looking to avoid aerial duels with their free kicks, often choosing to go for goal rather than a whip across in. And from Magul's saved free kick, Manin gets the ball out as quickly as possible into Karchawi. But of course against Germany, they're quick to set up in a defensive shape and able to force France back. Note here, boost position, this being your left midfielder looking to try and take more of a central position so if Renard plays the ball into Mbok, she can press her. And this coming off the fact that Oberdorf has stopped this transition and has turned Bilbo around and forced her to play back. But as France settle in possession, uh, Huth is obviously looking to try and get back into a more orthodox position. Okay, and Karchawi plays it down the line into Gascarino. Gascarino who's looking to try and combine with Mallard and Gioro. And as this play builds up, you will see Karchawi looking to try and make those runs, either overlapping or underlapping just generally trying to take advantage of the space created by Germany doubling up in this way. With all this pressure from Magul, the Brits, Gvin, etc., Germany are able to win the ball back and they look to try and counter-attack. Unfortunately for me, Germany's counter-attack couldn't really exploit the space because France have a lot of pace in their back line. And I think in that regard, they definitely missed having Clara Bull on the team sheet. And with that, we've covered some of the key tactics. Thanks for watching and we're out.